school that students are going to need uh, for the next couple of weeks as we'll be working from home. So you can reference that. You can let us know if there are any issues with that. And uh, we haven't uh, sort of published this yet, but uh, Kyle and or I plan to be around the school at least one or two days a week if there are times in the future that you need to come and get something. If you forgot something, uh, that's something I'm willing to go to the building anytime if someone needs something, uh, needs to drop in to, to grab anything. So more details about that will come out a little bit later. But for now, uh, you can see in the expectations, the only thing I wanted to highlight was the essential, additional, and enrich those uh, bolded words. Everything that we'll be assigning students will be categorized in one of those three categories. Uh, the essential things being the things that uh, students will need to be keeping up with as we're trying to move along. The additional, uh, still pretty important things, but things that, especially for families, as we know that every family is kind of in a different situation, some families uh, are going to be really constrained for time because of the current circumstances. Uh, and so we want to try to reduce the workload as much as possible for those families. While we know other families will have quite a bit of time at home and quite a bit of support, and they want to do as much as they can while they're at home. So that'll kind of help you prioritize. Uh, and so if you're a family, they can just kind of manage sort of the bare minimum. Uh, just do the things that are labeled essential by the teacher that's sharing it, and you can take care of those. And once those are taken care of, and you say, okay, we have some extra time, and we can do some other things, then you can move on to the additional items. And if you get through all of that, and you're saying, we've got a lot of time, and we want to continue working on things, you can move into the enrichment as well. So we want to make sure that we're not overwhelming the families with too much work. But at the same time, uh, we want to provide plenty of stuff for uh, especially those kids and those families that are very eager and have a lot of support at home to keep working on those things. So we hope that that will be a way that each household can kind of manage a workload that is going to be feasible for them. So again, if there are further questions about that, you can let us know. Part of our plan is in the early execution of this plan, we want to try to streamline uh, to have as few things as possible in that essential bracket just as we're all getting used to this home learning and distance learning situation and then as we feel that faculty and families are starting to feel comfortable with this plan with this kind of platform for teaching and learning uh, from there we hope to then layer more things on as we feel we can can bear more uh, and so as was mentioned in the message earlier today our goal is uh, not to overwhelm anybody with this plan but to try and make good and fruitful use of the time if we can uh, so then tips and recommendations for studying at home. I won't hit any of those specifically, but to see that the spirit of what we're doing, we want to try to uh, continue to maintain a level of structure and seriousness with uh, what we're doing. We want to try to uh, sort of uphold some of the Providence culture as well as we can, even from home uh, as we're going about this. It's a very unique situation, but at the same time, uh, there are some things that we think could be in some ways recreated as we continue working at home. Then you'll see below that, as we get to the last couple of pages, there are things outlined specifically for the lower school and the upper school. And uh, the general spirit there is that we hope to have uh, things shared with families at the beginning of each week, sort of a, a week's worth of material to work on and go through. And then families can kind of budget time and schedule is what works for their week. Uh, so you might have certain days where you just have more time on your hands to, to work with the kids and you can use those days to your advantage. Uh, and then other days might be a bit more of a challenge. So uh, that way you can kind of know what you're looking at for the week and you can kind of uh, arrange accordingly. And you'll see also it's a little bit different kindergarten through third and then fourth through sixth and for upper school. <coughs> We do know it's gonna be more difficult for the younger kids. Uh, a lot more of the, uh, the work that the younger kids do tends to need more of that interaction and interactivity. And uh, a lot of what we hope uh, to help the teachers provide to the homes are uh, a good direction so that the parents can guide and lead and facilitate those kinds of activities so that the students can continue growing and learning in those various things that they would be doing usually in class. Uh, one of the other things, and, and this is you know one of the more ambitious pieces, is sort of that last bullet point. Uh, we hope to create something kind of like this, like what we're doing here with Zoom, uh, but on the Google Meet, uh, which kind of is along with the other Google platforms we're using, so that students could kind of meet over a video chat and interact together, see one another, see their teacher. Uh, that's something that might come a little bit more down the line. 
but uh, that's something that we're going to be aiming to do as well. Uh, so a, a lot of that is pretty self-explanatory, I hope, but we're very happy to, to explain any of that further. Um, and so really, you know, the idea is we're going to tr try to provide all of the kind of understandings and materials and resources that you at home would need to uh, continue making educational progress with your kids through the Providence curriculum. But at the same time, uh, we as teachers and as, as administration, we wanna be resources to you guys, and we wanna do whatever we can uh, to help you do that, and to help you do that well. Uh, it would be too much to, to try and sort of completely recreate uh, the classroom experience and have sort of you know, those ongoing interactions uh, remotely and we know that for a lot of families their schedules have been turned upside down and so having scheduled meetings uh, could work you know for some homes pretty well but for others not so much and so we hope to record videos and send those recordings so you can watch them at your leisure uh, sending digitized uh, materials as well that you can use and uh, a lot of it will just be getting familiar with the Google Classroom platform uh, so each grammar school grade will have their own Google Classroom and parents of students in grammar school will have access to those Google Classrooms. And then for upper school, uh, there will be a Google Classroom for each course. So each student will be attached to each of their courses. So that's something that Kyle's going to go into more detail, which is probably going to be the more beneficial part of this time. He'll kind of get into the nitty gritty of the technical side of this of Google Classroom, what that entails, how you navigate through it. Uh, he's been putting a lot of that together. And so before I pass it along to him, I want to give him a lot of personal thanks and all of the technical side of this. Obviously, he's the one who's set up this Zoom meeting here for us tonight. And he has done an excellent job already kind of surveying all the different possible platforms we could have used to go forward with these remote learning situations, found the best ones that are going to work for us and for our families. And uh, so I just wanted to give a very big personal thanks to him that he has done work in that regard. And so I wanted to make sure that uh, you all were able to recognize that as well. But please feel free to submit questions. Uh, but before you do, I'm gonna pass it along to Kyle and he's gonna talk a little bit more about some of the technical aspects of this plan. All right. <clears throat> well, thank you, Chris. Chris has also done uh, a bunch of work uh, over spring break uh, to bring everything together. Um, so I am gonna address a couple of the more specific implementation pieces here. Um, a lot of you sent in different ideas, things that you've encountered, have experience with, um, and that's been really helpful as we've sought to figure out, hey, what, what makes the most sense for us in the current circumstances? Um, and there are a lot of pros uh, to a lot of different platforms. Um, and we ended up settling on Google, Clas Google Classroom as our primary platform for a couple different reasons. Um, it's already integrated with uh, the Google Suite that our faculty are familiar with, so their email, uh, their Google Drive storage, and things like that. Um, it's also integrated with uh, Fax SIS, which is our sort of back-end uh, grade system, and so there's uh, some bonuses there. That's actually a, a thing that normally would cost us money, but um, Fax is uh, offering it to us for free, and so um, that's another plus. Um, we already uh, are using Google Classroom in some of our upper school classes, especially in the, the junior and senior year, um, uh, mostly. Um, and so there are faculty members that already have familiarity with the platform and experience using it. And so Google Classroom will be the place where um, you'll find your primary communication, uh, materials, assignments, videos, uh, links to um, Google Meetups, uh, where where sort of live stream class class sessions, as it were, will take place. Um, you'll be able to find that all there. Um, <clears throat> so uh, how do you, how do you access that? Well, there's a couple. There, there's sort of two different uh, situations. So one, uh, Google Classroom is always accessed by an email account that or can only be accessed by an email account that has a ProvidenceSTL.org backend. Uh, and so that means that none of you can access it until you get one of those. And so what we've done is created a, an email for each of your students. Now we don't plan on giving those emails to your students. We plan on, at least in the grammar school, uh, those emails will go to you and that will be the way in which uh, you as parents log in and, uh, and, and access all of your students' uh, Google Classroom information. Um, so those emails have already been created. The information on how to log in 
uh, will be sent to you tomorrow. Um, and the first thing you're going to see when you log in is you'll see that you have access to um, Gmail, Google's email uh, application. And you're going to see that you have a bunch of, or at least a couple emails in there already, and they're going to be invitations uh, to join a Google Classroom of the grade of uh, the student. Uh, in the upper school, uh, the, we are giving those email accounts to uh, the students directly, though parents will also have access to that login information if they need it. So when that goes out, the ninth through 12th graders already have those emails, the seventh and eighth graders don't. When I send out the emails to seventh and eighth grade students tomorrow, uh, I will CC parents on that. So parents will have uh, all that access information as well. Uh, in the upper school, it'll be more on the students who have these email accounts to access their Google Classrooms themselves and keep up with it. But parents will add you as what's called guardians on uh, Google Classroom, and so that will enable you uh, to get a daily update on what's going on in each of the classes that your student is in. Um, so it'll look a little different on grammar versus upper. Grammar, parents will use their the student email in order to access everything directly. Uh, in the upper school, the upper school student will access stuff directly through that same email, and then parents can access it through uh, being made guardians, and, and we'll do that all for you on the back end. Um, so that's how you'll access it. Uh, the email account will simply notify you when things have been posted in the classrooms. So it can be useful, but you can also just go directly to Google Classroom and check out what's, what's going on in a particular Google Classroom. Uh, in fact, what I want to do really quickly here is, I'm going to share my screen. All right, so hopefully you're seeing my screen that has a bunch of Google Classes uh, or classes popped up here in Google Classroom. You're seeing all of them that have been created so far because I have access to all of them. Um, but I'm going to just pop into one of them uh, so you can see. So this 11th grade European history is a class that I'm already uh, or have been teaching all year and this classroom has existed all year. Um, when you click on it, you'll see what is called the stream up here at the top. Um, the stream just shows you everything that's going on in the class. So it's going to show uh, assignments that have been posted. Uh, it'll show announcements. For example, I announced that there was a, a live stream of a multiple choice strategy section for the juniors if they wanted to take a look at it. Um, made other announcements, you know, those sort of things. Um, the other tab up here is classroom and, or classwork, sorry. And classwork shows you all of the assignments um, that have been assigned over the course of uh, the school year. Um, and then in people, this is just showing you who, uh, so I'm the teacher of this class and then uh, you can see my students. Uh, I haven't invited guardians yet, but uh, parents will have invites to all these uh, accounts so that they can keep up with what their students are doing um, in, uh, in the upper school as well. All right, so that gives you a little bit of a picture of what classroom looks like. Uh, Faculty can also uh, track grades on here if they wish, um, but we haven't really sat down with faculty and got into the nitty gritty with this yet. So there is gonna be some aspects of the implementation of this that are gonna um, take time uh, for us to just figure out what works best. All right. Um, I think the other thing I wanted to talk about was Google Meet. And this is gonna be the platform that we use predominantly uh, for, um, our live streamed classes. Now we're using Zoom right now. We're using Zoom because it has a little bit more um, power to it um, than Google Meet. The nice thing about Google Meet is it will not require that your families or your students create any additional um, logins or anything like that. Uh, it's already integrated with other things that we're um, using Google Calendar and, and those sort of things. And so uh, what it's gonna allow us to do is um, post anytime there's going to be a live streamed meeting of a class. It'll be posted on the calendar that we shared with you. It's a new calendar. It's different from the normal public calendar. We call it the, the home learning calendar. And any Google meeting that's going to be scheduled for any given time will be posted there. And the grade uh, will be very clear who it's for. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, you'll be able to see, hey, here are the, the, the things that are coming up 
this week. Uh, we'll do that as well as a way of sort of centralized scheduling of those so we avoid uh, double booking because that was one of the concerns that some families mentioned uh, was if you're sharing a device across students and both of them have to be on it at the same time for a live stream class that could create difficulty. And so this is our attempt to address that concern. Uh, Google Meet is also free, so that's great. Um, and uh, and finally, it can record any sessions that you do, just like we're recording this uh, Zoom uh, meeting right now. You uh, Faculty can record meetings that they're doing with their students. And so what that'll enable them to do is uh, if a student's not able to attend what for, for whatever reason, uh, they can still watch the video of that meeting. So uh, th those are the the sort of the three main plat the the three main aspects, right? So Google Classroom, that's your centralized hub of information. Um, Gmail, the the student Gmail account, that's how you'll access everything. Um, again, ninth through twelfth graders already have that. K through K through eight uh, will be emailed to you tomorrow. Um, and then Google Meet will be the platform that we're hoping to use for any live streamed um, class meetups, that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> so those are uh, those, those are the main details as far as implementation goes uh, on the platforms that we've uh, on the platforms that we've uh, selected. So at this point, Chris, maybe pass it back to you. See if there's anything else you want to add, and then um, otherwise see if there's uh, other questions that people have? Yeah, uh, so while any other questions are coming in, I think the only thing uh, that I would note is uh, you, you saw Kyle's Google Classroom there and it was quite full. Uh, that's, you know, of course, you know, a year's worth of 11th grade work. Each Google Classroom will likely look a, a bit different, you know, depending on the grade level and so forth. And so especially as uh, we get started, the Google Classrooms won't be very full of many things yet. Uh, right now, they're all completely empty. And so as things are kind of coming in, uh, you'll see those come along week by week. But there will always be that full record there that you can always kind of look back on. Uh, I think the other thing to note is we certainly hope that we will be able to convene again back at the school even in just a couple of weeks. Uh, and right now, in, in terms of what the city of St. Louis has released, is that in April 3rd is when that will be reevaluated, which will be just two weeks after our spring break ends. But we at least want to let you guys know that we are prepared. Uh, we believe that all of this, you know, that we're putting together now will set us up well to potentially, if we have to, finish out the school year uh, with home learning. And so just to say that that's something we're ready for, though that's hopefully not what it's going to end up being. Hopefully this will just kind of bridge the gap and then we'll return together back at the school building uh, in just a few weeks time. But uh, of course, we'll have to see how that goes. But we'll continue communicating with you guys as things develop. Uh, I'm sure you'll be almost as aware as, as we are in many ways of how things are developing and when schools are reconvening. Uh, but we certainly hope to reconvene as soon as is possible. But uh, yeah, I think that's all uh, that I wanted to share at this point. Uh, I, there was one other thing. So with the Google Meet that Kyle was showing for live streaming conversations, kind of like the one we're having right now, uh, he mentioned this, but just to reiterate, that's something that you would see through uh, sort of an email with the student's email or on Google Classroom. Uh, there will be a scheduled time for that. And you should get plenty of heads up if there is going to be sort of like that live uh, interaction. And so that's not something that'll be kind of dropped on you all of a sudden. And oh no, if I miss it, then I've missed everything. Uh, like he said, it'll be recorded. Uh, students can drop in and check that out later as well. Uh, so this is new to all of us. Uh, this is something, you know, much, much different. And so we're just going to continue tinkering with it and working through it. Uh, Kyle and I think we've got a pretty good grasp on how this works, and we hope to do the same for the faculty as we meet on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, but at the same time, Kyle and I are available throughout this whole process uh, in any way that we can help you guys, even just alleviating any sort of anxiety. We want to uh, be of assistance to you guys. So Kyle and I are your resources, uh, and we're very happy to help however we can uh, kind of get you guys set up as we go through this. All right. I think I'm the one who uh, is able to see most of the questions. So I'll ask them, and I'll, I'll probably throw out an answer. And then, uh, Chris, if you want to add or uh, correct Sounds my good. answers, feel free. Um, so a couple of questions about how do multiple parents access Google Classroom. Um, We'll probably have to figure that out a little bit, but I think the, the, the tentative plan will be um, that 
that parents will just use that students, um, for grammar school at least, parents will just use that student's email and password, which would be, um, which both parents should know um, and will be sent to both parents. And so uh, that way, either parent can log into that email account and access the Google Classroom um, through that means. Um, so I think that's, that's, the, that's the way, at least as I'm thinking about it right now, how we would address that issue. Um, if we run into hiccups with that or whatever, we can continue to troubleshoot that. Um, another question that came through is just how will students return completed work to teachers um, or will parents grade work? I think some of this, some of the details of it are gonna be sorted out as we meet with faculty Monday and Tuesday and we brainstorm and, and you know, the, the faculty that know their classes best and know um, their coursework the best will be able to give us as administrators feedback as well. Uh, there are means by which we can, um, families could submit work back on Google Classroom, um, th whether that's scanning it in, taking a picture with of written work with your iPhone. Um, those are all, all different possibilities, um, but we really still need to sort out with our faculty what exactly is going to make the most sense given our curriculum. And, you know, the reality is that we've, in, you know, in the grammar school especially, we emphasize handwritten work um, and not online or typed work. And so uh, we'll have to, to sort out exactly how to adapt well. Um, so yeah, that, go ahead, Chris. I was just going to say, I think, um, you know, that's something that we will be sorting out with faculty. And I think you can expect to hear from your students, teachers uh, more so on that. And so as we're kind of working through that, we probably won't have kind of a uniform method of what that looks like. I think it will depend on the grade level and the coursework that's uh, necessary for each grade level. So that's something we'll be working through with the faculty. And then uh, your child's teacher should be able to communicate to you what that's going to look like, you know, given the kind of work that they'll be doing in that class. So that's something we're definitely mindful of. That's been the same question that faculty members have had. And at certain levels, you know, hard copy things might be much more important. And so we're gonna see if there are ways that we can keep things as remote as possible, but as well, we'll, uh, depending on what the needs are, come up with a plan and make sure that gets communicated either from us or from the teacher. Um, I saw a question there about for seventh and eighth graders when we're creating their accounts, uh, we'll send those tomorrow when I send the email that has the login information for um, the students, uh, we'll send those to the parents, uh, to to both guardians, and so um, those will be uh, those will those those log that login information will come to parents on a K through eight level, and then um, I think generally speaking, the seventh and eighth graders will be involved on Google Classroom managing it themselves. Whereas um, for the the K through six level, um, there will probably be more more direct parental involvement in the managing of their Google Classrooms. Um, obviously, there's going to be um, a learning curve for everybody, learning curve um, for, for, you know, us as, as parents and adults, uh, certainly a learning curve for the seventh and eighth graders as they're adjusting. And even for the ninth through 12th graders who might have already had a few Google Classrooms set up, this is still a, a, a totally different thing. Um, and so we just recognize that there's going to be, um, you know, we'll have to figure out some of the um, individual pieces of implementation as we, uh, as we encounter them. Yeah, and, and just, just to be sure to be clear on the answer to that question that I see there, only ninth through 12th graders currently have a Providence email. Uh, and so the K through 8th grade students and families can expect to receive those coming up in the future. So uh, ninth through 12th graders have those, but 7th and 8th graders wouldn't have had them yet. As we said, so both parents will be able to access email the, the Google Classroom through the student email. Both parents can access that at the same time. Uh, Google just treats that like you're accessing your account from two different devices, and so uh, that that shouldn't be an issue. Um, another question about uh, if if parents with uh, kids in the same class can confer via Google Classroom, um, that capability is not there. There's the ability of students. Well, I should say this: in whoever has access to the Google Classroom, there's options to to comment on posts or whatever. So if you look, when I went through and showed you the stream, um, there was, uh, there there's the option to, to comment on any post or whatever. So those could be places for parents uh, to discuss things. Uh, there was also a suggestion um, by one parent in the comment box uh, about creating a, a private Facebook group for parents on implement, like on, you know, figuring out curriculum implementation. All those seem like 
uh, really interesting ideas. And, and as an administration, we want to do whatever we can to uh, facilitate collaboration, not just um, between teachers and parents, but between parents who are all trying to figure this out together. Uh, yeah. And so that's, you know, what, what exactly we're going to do or what, whether that's a Facebook group or is it within classroom. Um, I think those are some of the details that we'll have to work out as we go. Um, and we'll probably have a more clear sense of that maybe next week. Um, but we definitely want to do whatever we can to uh, enable collaboration. Yeah. And, and like Kyle said, in the Google Classroom itself, whenever there's a post, whether that post is here's an assignment or, you know, here's just sort of an announcement from the teacher, you can comment on those kinds of things. And so if you have a, a question or a comment or a thought, that's something that this teacher will receive and all the other students in the class will get to see that. So, so there's that feature. But yeah, like as Kyle said, uh, if there are other means by which you guys can get in contact with other parents who are in the same class as your kids, that could be really helpful. And we can, you know, do whatever we can to help with that. But at the same time, it might even be easier for you guys to take care of some of that on your own. But just let us know how we can be of assistance. Uh, question about administering tests and quizzes. Will parents be in charge of that? Uh, I think that'll be a discussion that we have with faculty on Monday and Tuesday to figure out um, what's the best way to uh, implement assessments. And some of that might change or will change based on grade level and nature of assessments and, and that sort of thing. Uh, there is the ability to create assessments on Google Classroom uh, that are digital online assessments. Um, so whether that's, that, that's an option, whether that's the best option in a given circumstance might vary. And so, uh, so I think a lot of that's really just gonna depend on uh, the circumstances and it's gonna be something that the faculty, that we sit down and discuss with the faculty next week to think about what is the, the best way forward with that. So a question here too about um, how parents should contact teachers or be in contact with teachers, what's the best medium or platform, um, time of day, all of those kind of questions. Um, I don't know, Mr. Buckles, do you want to take that or do you want me to, I'm happy to comment on it as well. Yeah, uh, obviously uh, Google Classroom will have some uh, lines by which you can make contact. There's always the teacher's emails. Uh, I think if it's helpful to you know, set up a Google Meet or a phone call with a teacher, uh, try to appoint that time with them. You can send an email out or you can reach out on Google Classroom and say, hey, it would be helpful if you know, I could have a Google Meet with you or if we could sit down and talk on the phone just because I'm struggling with this or trying to figure that out. Um, that, that can always be, be scheduled in that way. Um, so I think those kind of direct lines are, are good ways. And, and so all the, the usual lines that have been there with teacher emails especially. Uh, I think depending on the situation, you know, for some teachers will generally be available throughout the day. But at the same time, many of us uh, have had changes of situations with our own children and in our own households, and we're kind of juggling kids here too. Uh, so you may not always be immediately available, but we want to make ourselves available as a resource. So I think reaching out via email and appointing a time to meet or talk, if there's a conversation that needs to be had, is the best way to go. I'm looking through, and I don't know that I've if there that there are other questions that I've missed though. It's very possible that there are because the, the chat bar is hard to navigate a bit. Uh, a hand raised. That's right. There is the hand raised function. Um, so if you do have other questions and want to shoot them out real quick, we're happy to answer them. Um, but if there aren't, that's okay too. We know that you probably will have lots of questions over the course of the next week. Um, and, and so as, as Chris has already mentioned, we, you know, feel free to reach out to us and, um, you know, we'll do our best to get, get you answers and where there aren't answers yet, we'll uh, seek to be as, as uh, regular and transparent in our communication uh, as possible. Yeah, I think something else uh, that I would say too is when we're meeting with the faculty next week, something that will really be encouraging the faculty to do is not introduce too much new coursework material in that in those initial stages uh, maybe do a bit of review because obviously we won't have met for you know, a week and a half anyway because of spring break it's always good to do a little bit of review even if we're coming back into the classroom uh, but also uh, to kind of remove one layer of the the challenge that this is going to be and so then 
rather than learning a bunch of new material on that first day or two, uh, taking a little time just to learn how to use this platform, uh, doing some things that maybe they're familiar with already. So, uh, so don't expect, you know, on that Wednesday, just for there to be a huge download of a bunch of new things that you've got to learn and do. Uh, we're going to be very sensitive to the fact that, you know, we as teachers are trying to find the best way to push material out and seeing that students and parents are receiving that material in such a way that makes sense and that they're able to, to respond to well. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be working through that next week. And then I think really the second week you can expect us to start trying to break more new ground in our curriculum uh, once we feel like the parents and the students and the teachers all have a good handle on what's going on. So, so a yeah. couple more questions came in. Um, so uh, one just was the best way parents can support us. I, I really think, you know, one of the things that, that, that Chris said in his letter uh, this afternoon is just, you know, hopefully um, just as a whole community, whether it's with administration, faculty, fellow families, uh, students, that we can have, uh, you know, flexibility and grace with one another because this is a new adventure for all of us. And, um, and, and so there are going to, there is going to be course correction as we're trying different things out and uh, certain things, you know, the, the plan seems like it's a good plan and, uh, but we, but we anticipate that there's the possibility that it'll need to change at various points and, and obviously the broader situation is pretty fluid as well. So um, I think that's that's one thing that would be really helpful. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Chris. I, I think what I would add to that is I've already been tremendously encouraged. I uh, really want to thank all of you guys for what you've uh, shared in the surveys and uh, emails that I've received. It's just been a lot of encouragement already coming from our community and a lot of prayers. And uh, those have definitely been felt. And it's really, I think, helped Kyle and I a lot through this process. It's, uh, it's a, you know, a different kind of thing that we're facing here in trying to find creative solutions, trying to find effective solutions, uh, and trying to make sure that we can, you know, make the best of what is a very challenging and unusual situation. And so I just want to say I'm already very encouraged and really appreciate everyone's support uh, already. So thank you all, uh, and thank you all for being here. We appreciate you taking some time out of your evening to, to step in and uh, hear us highlight a few things and try to share with you guys uh, what we hope this will look like. We think we've laid some good groundwork here, uh, but at the same time, we know that this will kind of evolve and develop as we get into it next week. So uh, you'll definitely be hearing a lot more from us, especially once we start working with faculty. More things are going to pop up and things that are worth sharing, and so, uh, we're going to try to make sure that we are uh, communicating regularly with everyone. Uh, but at the same time, we wanted to have this opportunity to sort of have a face-to-face -face meeting because, you know, everyone's kind of been in isolation for a while and uh, it can be uh, tough just getting things through emails. And so we wanted to just kind of, you know, present ourselves to you and, and kind of share with you some of the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish. And again, we really, really appreciate you guys stopping in here tonight. There was one other question uh, that I think we can sort of address somewhat quickly, asking just about recording lectures for upper school classes. I think that's very likely that we'll use that. I'm, I'm sure that in, my, for example, my history classes, that's one of the, the primary tools um, that I'll use to replicate some of what was going on in class. Um, the, the other question that was there was, um, how are we going to address uh, AP classes that have AP tests in May? Uh, the short answer to that is we don't know yet because uh, College Board hasn't actually made a decision about what their plan is. Um, they're supposed to make an announcement tomorrow. Um, and so as we get information about the College, college Board's plan for AP testing, um, that's when we'll relay on to you what our plan is to adjust to, um, to, to whatever they uh, come up with. I know that they're trying to, to troubleshoot and problem solve, but um, AP tests present a, a pretty unique and, and, and particularly difficult challenge. Um, but our plan right now is, is to, to continue to prepare students for AP tests and, until uh, we hear otherwise. Um, and so I do think video lectures will be a, a significant part of that. All right, I think those are most of the questions. If we missed one, please do reach out to us via email. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll seek to get an answer uh, to you um, as soon as we can. 
and uh, yeah, very, very possibly uh, do something like this um, next week as well, if we need to, just to uh, keep you all in the in the loop and um, yeah, be as uh, as as connected as we can be, even though we're uh, all in our own homes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you all. And as Kyle said, if there are other questions, this wasn't your only chance to ask them. So please, you know, know that mine and Kyle's, our doors, but not our, not our doors, but our emails are always open. <laughs> and so you can send us emails, ask us questions, and, uh, you know, just let us know how we can help you either better understand the plan or address any concerns that you have with it. But you'll be hearing more from us next week. And we hope you guys are able to have a good and restful weekend and enjoy the rest of your spring break and that the students will enjoy an extra two days of spring break next week as well. All right. All righty. So I think we're all, all done here. So you all are free to log off, or I suppose if you want to chat to each other in the chat box, you can do that too. Uh, whatever whatever entertain, <laughs> entertainment we can get. But uh, that's all we have for this evening, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, connecting with you all next week. All right. Thank you. Good night, everyone. <laughs>